Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India So I welcome you all to the 30th lecture of um, this NPTEL MOOC course uh, titled Psychology of Stress, Health and Wellbeing. So this is 13th lecture uh, overall, uh, but this is uh, the first lecture of module 5. So in this, uh, this module 5 is again about coping processes and, and strategies. Uh, uh, this section 7, uh, second section. So, the module 4 was about coping processes and strategies 1. So, this is uh, coping processes and strategies 2. So, in the module 4, uh, we have started talking about coping processes and various strategies and uh, primarily we have focused on uh, the definitions of coping uh, processes and strategies and some of the common maladaptive strategies that are used by most, uh, by commonly used by the people. In this module, uh, we are specifically talking about the idea of uh, the specific strategies of constructive coping strategies. So, before we talk about today's lecture, uh, uh, which is about relaxation exercises, let us have a brief recap of the last lecture, that is lecture 12. So, in the lecture 12 or the last lecture, uh, we have discussed about the concept of constructive coping or healthy coping strategies. So, we have discussed that by the word constructive coping, we generally mean that you know, uh, the coping strategies which involves uh, dealing with the stress or addressing the stressors which are relatively you know in a relatively healthy and uh, more positive ways of dealing with them. And we in that context, we have also tried to understand that the, our quality of life the productivity and the efficiency of our life uh, largely depends on you know our effectiveness the effectiveness of our coping strategies that we use in our day to day life in that context we have discussed you know uh, kaplan's uh, seven characteristics of effective coping or constructive coping uh, primarily uh, the ideas which which were discussed under the seven characteristics included you know actively uh, you know actively dealing with the uh, stressors, particularly you know engagement type of coping, uh, actively seeking support wherever it is uh, you know, required, particularly the social support and breaking a larger problem into smaller chunk. Uh, this was another important characteristics uh, into uh, and then mastering feelings and having faith in oneself and the others. So, these are the some of the characteristics that we have discussed uh, uh, under Kaplan 7 characteristics of coping strategies. Uh, then we have discussed, you know, uh, coping effectiveness training. So, some coping effectiveness training module uh, was developed by Falkman and other colleagues. And uh, primarily, we have not gone into the details of uh, the modules of the coping effectiveness training, but we have discussed uh, some of the major characteristics of coping effectiveness training. How to effectively deal with uh, you know, stressors, particularly what are the important ideas that we need to understand and remember. So, in that context, we have discussed three important steps. One step is, uh, first step is identifying stressors and breaking them from general to more specific stressors or larger stressor into more manageable smaller stressors, because it is difficult to deal with larger stressors you know, at a time. So, it is always better to break them into more manageable smaller chunks, uh, so that we can deal with them more effectively. And the second idea is sorting stressors into changeable and unchangeable aspect. So, once you break stressors into more manageable smaller chunks, then find out what is changeable and what is unchangeable. 
and then the third step is matching those strategies with the app, uh, with the uh, sources of the stressors so basically uh, if there is a changeable aspects in the stressors we need to use it is better to use problem focus coping and if there is something unchangeable uh, in that stressors we cannot do anything about it then it is better to use emotion focus coping strategy uh, then we have discussed physical ways of coping so basically we have started talking about specific uh, strategies from the last class. So, we started talking about at the physical level what we can do to cope with the stressors. So, one important thing that we have discussed in that context was physical exercises, uh, which is generally con you know, connected with the physical health, but uh, research also shows that physical exercises, particularly aerobic exercises, play a very important role uh, for both physical ma and mental health, and particularly, you know. Uh, dealing or effectively dealing with the stressful life circumstances. It uh, primarily does so by making some physiological changes uh, in that sense uh, aerobic exercises you know reduces stress hormones from the body particularly cortisol and also uh, regular exercises also uh, aerobic exercises releases uh, helps to release uh, hormones such as endorphins which enhances our mood. So, it kinds of you know enhances positivity in our life and uh, also research sh shows that we have discussed that you know uh, exercise also gives us break from the regular worries and tension that we experience in life. So, it kinds of gives us a break from that uh, while, while you know we focus on exercises and uh, that is basically called as time out hypothesis. So, we have discussed all these things in the last lecture. Uh, today. Uh, uh, in this lecture, we will focus on few more uh, specific strategies, uh, which are related to kind of physical ways of coping, but you know they are more like mind body strategies. So, today we will talk about relaxation exercises, uh, which are generally you know discussed in the context of coping with stress. So, we will uh, discuss relaxation exercises and particularly two specific uh, strategies we will discuss. Uh, one is uh, no, deep breathing exercises and another is called as progressive muscle relaxation. So, relaxation exercises are kind of very popular methods uh, generally suggested by professionals or laymen's for coping with the stress uh, and uh, most of you may be knowing some relaxation exercises. And, uh, generally people find them very beneficial in terms of you know dealing with stress or at least uh, removing the stress from our system from the mind and body. So, relaxation and stress responses are kind of opposite to each other simply because when you are stressed you cannot be relaxed and when you are relaxed you cannot be stressed. So, these are kind of you know contradictory uh, states of mind and physiologically also stress is mediated by sympathetic nervous system and uh, relaxation is mediated by parasympathetic nervous system. Uh, so, uh, so, induction of relaxation response automatically reduces stress because this is a contradictory straight. So, this is uh, relaxation exercises are one of the effective or the most uh, popular method and effective method for dealing with stress or coping with the stress. So, let us start talking about uh, one such strategy of relaxation, uh, which is uh, deep breathing or it is also called as diaphragm uh, diaphragmatic breathing, diaphragmatic breathing or deep breathing. It is a very common wisdom generally, you know, whenever we experience stress and anxiety, you know, people will generally suggest you take few deep breaths. So, there is an uh, inherent understanding uh, you know uh, within most of us that you know taking deep breaths helps us to relax immediately you know. So, this has very important impact and uh, most of the people know about it. So, let us see uh, what is the mechanisms and how it influences us. So, one important question I would like to ask you uh, you know before discussing deep breathing. Uh, have you noticed how you breathe? when you are relaxed and when you are tensed. Have you noticed the difference 
in your breathing pattern when you feel relaxed as compared to when you feel highly tensed. If you notice, uh, if you observe it, observe your breathing pattern, you will find you know specific differences uh, in the breathing pattern based on your mental states. So, our mental state influences our breathing pattern. So, this is one of the important kind of correlation that we can observe and find. So, generally uh, when we are relaxed, generally we take slow and deep breathing, automatically it happens. When you are tense and stressed, we take shallow and fast breathing it happens automatically you know physiologically there is a connection you know so depending on your mental state our breathing pattern also changes so we use this wisdom of the body to induce relaxation by deep breathing so generally you know our breathing patterns can influence our mental and physical uh, state and health I mean, so breathing is so important. I mean, obviously, you know, breathing is connected to our life, but our health, physical and mental health are also very strongly connected to our breathing patterns. So, there are two basic patterns of breathing that uh, generally we can observe as I have discussed. One is called as, you know, chest breathing or thoracic breathing, hmm? thoracic breathing or chest breathing. So, basically, which is called as shallow breathing shallow and fast breathing and the second type of breathing is called as diaphragmatic breathing or abdominal breathing which is also called as slow and deep breathing. So, commonly these are two patterns of breathing that we uh, I mean in terms of you know extremes of breathing pattern we can find out these two patterns of breathing. Uh, one is chest breathing or shallow breathing, one is abdominal breathing or deep uh, and slow breathing. Thoracic or uh, chest breathing is basically shallow rapid breaths uh, in the upper part of the lungs. So, upper part of the lung is near to chest. So, generally our chest moves when we uh, do or when we engage in uh, you know chest breathing or shallow breathing. So, most of the air goes to upper part of the lungs. So, our chest basically moves while doing uh, uh, chest breathing or shallow breathing. On the other hand, diaphragmatic or abdominal breathing is generally deep and slow breathing, which goes up to the lower part of the lung. So, our stomach or abdomen moves while doing deep breathing. So, it goes up to the stomach level, so lower part of the lungs. So, while doing deep breathing actually our stomach moves, goes you know uh, moves outside while doing uh, abdominal breathing. Our chest area moves during the chest breathing uh, while abdomen or the stomach moves uh, while doing diaphragmatic breathing or deep breathing. And this deep breathing is fundamental to all relaxation exercises simply because where whatever relaxation exercises we do. Uh, deep breathing kinds so of we start with deep breathing. So, this is very important because this is one of the best and the direct ways of inducing a relaxation response in the body. So, it is a common uh, undercurrent among all relaxation exercises. On top of that we can do many other uh, kinds of strategies or techniques we can use, but most of the strategies kind of start with you know uh, a deep breathing. So, according to some of the uh, some Harvard Medical School publication, you know, deep breathing is becoming more and more unnatural in today's world for many reasons. You know, people are kind of uh, promoting, you know, kind of consciously and unconsciously, you know, are engaged in more and more shallow chest breathing. One major reason is related to our concept of ideal body image. You know, you know. So, generally you know if you see uh, the media and, and, and the advertisement and this whole world of ideal body image, generally a flat stomach is considered attractive for both male and female. So, 
consciously or unconsciously most of the time we are conscious that you know stomach is kind of inside you know it is flat stomach because it is associated with ideal body image and attractive body image so as a result we are kind of most of the uh, most of the time you know doing chest breathing so we are not doing uh, you know involved in deep breathing so that the breath goes into the stomach and you know, and uh, the movement in the stomach happens so most of the time we are not doing that simply because we want to keep our stomach flat so most of the time unconsciously we are doing chest breathing just to keep or show our body as more attractive or kind of you know ideal image of the body so this kind of uh, concepts are associated it interferes with our deep breathing and gradually it becomes a normal thing you know chest breathing becomes a normal thing so most of the time we are kind of you know engaged in shallow chest breathing and not doing the deep breathing so it may have consequences in terms of you know such shallow breathing may actually uh, will not help us to relax in a very deeper sense so most of the time we may be more anxious and stressed simply because we are not able to take you know deep breathing and in the shallow breathing another uh, the thing is that in the lowest part of the lung doesn't get the proper share of oxygenated air so if you are doing shallow breathing your lungs is not getting the uh, the the amount of oxygenated air that is required for the lungs so because it is shallow it is not kind of fully oxygenated you know air is not going you know to the lungs properly so it may have physiological consequences and it may have mental consequences in terms of we will not be able to relax properly so uh, if you just let me show you using a diagram uh, about this mechanism the connection between the mind and breathing pattern so whenever uh, so this uh, mental experience of stress and anxiety induces shallow chest breathing or it can be other way around also sometimes you know too much of shallow and chest breathing may induces stress and anxiety in the mind also so both can interact in both ways on the other hand so on the other hand you know relaxed state of mind induces deep and slow abdominal breathing and on the other, the other way around also it can happen a deep and slow abdominal breathing can induce uh, relaxation so let's say when we experience stress and anxiety it automatically induces you know shallow chest breathing if you can change our breathing pattern at that moment like this so instead of shallow chest breathing if we induce deep slow breathing at the moment when we experience stress it will slowly change our mental experience of stress and anxiety and it will kind of you know uh, you know replace stress and anxiety with relaxation response so this is the mechanism that actually works out here so whenever we experience stress so we are likely to experience deep and chest breathing if you 
consciously change at that moment your breathing pattern into more abdominal deep and slow breathing. It will induce relaxation response in our mind and change stress and anxiety to more relaxed response. Primarily deep and slow breathing um, activates by, by actually activating parasympathetic nervous system whose function is to calm down and relax. Uh, it induces relaxation response. So, basically uh, uh, it activates you know parasympathetic nervous system which induces relaxation response. So, this is the uh, connection or mechanism between mind and breathing pattern. So, when we are anxious, stress or disturbed, our breathing pattern becomes rapid, shallow and irregular. So, basically the breathing changes to thoracic breathing. Uh, interestingly, by changing breathing pattern, uh, we can uh, change our mental uh, experiences. So, if you consciously change our breathing to slow, deep and abdominal breathing during exercise or stress, uh, sorry, during anxiety and stress, uh, it will activate parasympathetic nervous system and induce relaxation. So, this is the whole thing that I tried to show using diagram. So, this is uh, the mechanism by which deep breathing works. So, uh, some research shows that slow or uh, deep breathing um, is associated with increase in parasympathetic activity of the nervous system, which is associated with you know uh, relaxation response. A growing number of empirical studies uh, also reveal that you know diaphragmatic or breathing or you know abdominal or deep breathing triggers body's relaxation re response and benefit both physical and mental health. So, many research also indicates the benefits of uh, deep breathing. So, uh, here is some of the instruction that uh, you can follow for doing simple uh, you know, deep breathing exercise. So, for uh, doing a deep breathing exercise, you know it is a very simple, it may take you know hardly you know 5 minutes uh, that can be done while when we experience stress or it can be done as a regular part of exercise. So, for this you can just sit or lie down comfort in a comfortable position. So, this can be done while sitting in a chair also or while lying down also. Uh, so, for deep breathing uh, generally uh, you need to put one hand on your belly and one hand on your chest. So, that you know you can detect the movement where the air is going. So, the idea of deep breathing is that it should go to your belly, your belly should move and in chest breathing your chest moves. So, just to detect that you put both your hand, one hand on your belly, one hand on your chest. So, inhale, take a deep breath through your nose. So, you can just inhale, take deep breath. So, whenever you will take deep breath, one thing that you will experience that your hand that is put on your belly will move. Your hand on your chest should not move. So, if your hand on your belly moves, that is the sign that you are taking deep breath. So, if your moves hand on your chest on in your abdomen moves out. So, that is then you are taking deep breaths. So, as you inhale feel your belly rise and that pushes your hand out. Your hand on the chest should not move. So, while inhaling your hand on your belly should move out and your hand on your chest should not move. Take a short pause after the inhalation, then exhale. While you breathe out, you breathe out through your pressed lips, not through nose here, through your pressed lips as if you are whistling. So, so your breath should move out of your pressed lips as if you are whistling. So, as you exhale your hand on your belly should fall back again your hand on your belly should fall back 
and there should not be any movement on the, in the hand of your chest, hand that is put on your chest. So, this is the simple exercise that you can do, just put your one hand on your belly, one hand on your chest, inhale through your nose, while inhaling your hand on your belly should move out, hold it for some time, few seconds, exhale through your lips as if you are whistling. While exhaling, again your hand on your belly should move not on your chest. So, this is a very simple exercise that can be done for deep breathing uh, whenever it is required or it can be done as a regular exercise also. Uh, this is one of the simplest exercise that immediately induces a relaxation response. And uh, so, we should uh, make this habit of doing deep breathing as much as possible. It is good for your body as well as mind also because through deep breathing uh, your lungs is also getting more oxygenated air. Uh, when you do shallow breathing your lungs is also kind of you know deprived of oxygenated air. Uh, so, this is very important that we can do it consciously through exercise also and we can do it you know in a regular you know day to day life also we can make it more habit of doing deep breathing. Now, we will talk about another relaxation exercise which is called as progressive muscle relaxation uh, which is in short form also called as uh, PMR. This is again one of the most very popular you know relaxation exercise among professionals also and, uh, uh, and one of the most effective ways of doing very deep relaxation and it was uh, developed by Jacobson in 1938. So, you can see you know it was developed you know many decades ago, but still it is very popular simply because of its effectiveness. So, what is a progressive muscle relaxation? <coughs> so, uh, progressive muscle relaxation you know uh, teaches us how to relax our muscles through two step processes. So, it actually uh, you know it is not directly focused on mind as such, but it is focused on uh, relaxing our muscles of the body using two steps. Uh, one is you know first you systematically tense particular muscle groups of the body. So, we have different muscle groups in our body, we will discuss, discuss some of the examples of those muscle groups and we can identify each muscle group and tense them. So, that you know tense them more in, in one step, we tense these muscles muscle group one by one. Uh, such as your face or it could be your you know, arm and shoulder. So, tense the muscle muscles muscle group one by one, this is the one step systematically one by one and then once you tense the muscle group you notice the tension and then you release the tension and feel the relaxation. So, tensing the muscle relaxing the and releasing them and feel the relaxation. So, this is the whole idea of progressive muscle relaxation. So, first is identifying different muscle groups of the body, tensing each muscle group and then relaxing them, tensing them, relaxing them. So, what is this idea of tensing and relaxing, how it works? So, the idea is that you know whenever there is a con contrasting experiences, we kind of understand the value of, of an experience in the presence of a contrast. So, whenever we feel very tense, then we can understand the value of relaxation. So, we create a contrasting uh, you know, kind of experience and then you feel the opposite which is you know, much more easier to feel when there is a contrast. So, you know we kind of understand the value of happiness when we are very in a sorrowful state. You know, So, sorrowful state makes happiness much more important. You know, So, there is a contrast. Similarly, when we ex consciously use or create tension, the relaxation, the importance of relaxation and the experience of relaxation become much more pronounced and we experience it in a much better way. So, by creating this tension and relaxation, uh, we achieve a highly relaxed state of body, which ultimately in induces relaxation in the mind also. 
So, this is the basic idea of progressive muscle relaxation. So, uh, here the connection of mind body is basically like this. Uh, So, this is the cycle actually what happens whenever we experience stress and tension in our mind, it influences our body muscles. So, you might have experienced that whenever you are very stressed, uh, you experience you know headache, you experience you know pain in the muscles of the body particularly you know back, neck, uh, you know it is primarily because our tension of our mind is kind of you know getting you know influenced by influenced and it is kind of stored in the body muscles. So, tension in the mind is actually creates tension in the body muscles, which is experienced in terms of pains and aches in the body. And this tension in the body or muscles in, in turn in increases the tension in the mind. So, it is a kind of vicious circle, you know one influence other than again that influences the other again. So, this is kind of vicious circle uh, that many time people find it difficult to come out of it. So, according to uh, Jacobson uh, who developed this technique, uh, there is a direct relationship between tension in the mind and tension in the body muscles. So, directly and uh, I think we do not need research evidence, we all can experience that in our day to day life also. Anxiety, stress creates you know muscle tensions. So, anxiety and stress creates tension or tighten up muscles in the body or muddy uh, that is why we all say no, no uh, that I need to relax my body. You know? So, because body becomes very heavy and stiff when we experience stress and anxiety in the mind. This tightness in the muscle leads to various unpleasant feelings in the body such as you know headache, pain in the neck, chest, back etcetera. And this unpleasant feelings in the body further inc increases stress and anxiety that increases again increases muscle tension. So, this is a kind of vicious cycle that we experience you know many time in our you know in our day to day life. Uh, so, this is what happens. So, using progressive mus muscle relaxation we are trying to break this vicious circle. So, trying to break it by relaxing our body muscles. So, that will turn again relax our mind which will again relax our body. So, this relaxation of the muscle will kind of break this cycle. So, relaxation is the only way to break this vicious cycle and particularly this progressive muscle relaxation is very effective in the sense it really works at the body level not just at the mental level you know it relaxes the body at the muscle level. And uh, it can be done very easily because we do not need much focus and concentration you know. Uh, it is more like physical exercise where no, uh, it can be done by everybody. So, relaxation is a skill that we need, we need to learn because we, it will not happen automatically. We need to induce it, do something about it. Progressive muscle relaxation is one such skill that induces relaxation very easily and it can be learned by everybody because there is nothing much technical about it. So, we will we'll, I will just tell you what is what are the steps involved in it. So, uh, it works on the principles on the principle that one cannot feel anxious when physically relaxed. So, when we are in the state of physically relaxed state we cannot experience stress and anxiety because both are kind of contradictory state of experience both cannot happen together they can happen you know in separately. So, I will just give you some of the you know instructions of how to do it. So, before one uh, need to do progressive muscle relaxation few important things you know it can be done by everybody, but few important instructions one need to remember. One is uh, it may take about 15 minutes 
uh, even shorter uh, versions can be done also, but in general it may take 15 minutes for this exercise and it is better to do it in a quiet and comfortable place so that there is no distraction. It is better to remove your shoes and wear loose clothes, so which is true for any exercise. Uh, if you have any underlying medical con condition that may you know hinder your in terms of tensing muscles, so if there are issues in your bones certain part of the body, so it is better not to do it. Uh, ideally there is no problem, you know, it is not a serious threat, but if there are some issues, uh, medical issues, it is better not to do it, especially some that hinder some physical activity or there is some problem in your bones and avoid doing it immediately after uh, heavy food. So, generally we should not do any exercise after meal, so because you know um, that is not the right time for doing exercise. So, these are few important things that we should uh, know, remember while uh, doing any exercise and particularly you know progressive muscle relaxation. Some of the general instruction before I give you specific instructions. So, uh, as I have said you know deep breathing is kind of uh, common to all uh, relaxation exercises. So, similarly you know progressive muscle relaxation we should start with deep breathing. So, before you be begin uh, take few deep and slow breaths. So, it will help you to kind of stabilize and feel relaxed. Uh, the next step is you know tensing the muscle groups. So, I will just tell you what are the muscle groups. So, as, as you breathe in tense the muscle group, you, you can identify different muscle groups and start with one muscle group. Let us say start with feet, tense the muscle group as hard as you can for 5 to 10 seconds. As you inhale tense the muscle group let us say this is your hand you want to tense it. So, tense it as much as possible for at least 5 seconds, feel the tension you know of in the target muscle group whatever let us say this is hand and then you release it. So, tensing muscle group is the first, then the next is obviously releasing the tension. While you exhale you simply release the tension of the muscle. So, you tense it as much as possible while inhaling while exhaling just release all the tension and feel the relaxation that is kind of experience in that particular muscle group. Feel how the stress leaves the target. So, if you tense and then relax all the tension will release and you can experience it because there was a contrast. Notice the difference between tension and relaxation fully emerges in the experience of relaxation. So, tense, relax and then rest for few seconds maybe 5 to 10 seconds and feel the relaxation in the target muscle for some time. So, what are the target muscle groups? So, we, we have different muscle groups in our body you know. Uh, uh, we can kind of you know do this exercise by identifying those muscle groups. So, we can start from let us say feet to toe. So, we can progressively muscle relaxation. This is called as progressive muscle relaxation. So, you relax different muscle groups progressively one by one. So, progressively when we do an exercise or identify muscle group progressively from let us say feet to head or head to feet it can be done both ways. So, let us say we start with feet to head different muscle groups we can identify. So, start with feet which includes feet and toes basically this could be one uh, muscle group. We can tighten this muscle group you know you know simply by curling your toes or pressing the feet if you are sitting on the floor and you know or curling the toes. So, you can just tense the muscle in the feet. So, you can find out the ways of tensing it, it can be done very easily. So, you can start with feet and toes basically feet part. So, this could be one separate muscle group. Uh, then go little you know, upper side of the body up you know after feet we can come to lower legs. Low, so, basically lower leg is the part between your knee and ankle and it includes 
calves muscles which is basically you know uh, back portion of the lower leg uh, which is which has a lot of muscles you know so one can tense the lower leg you know, by tightening the muscles of the calves you know it can be done you can just you know try it tightening the muscles of the lower leg by tightening the muscles of the calves so you can tense it tighten it and then release it so if you come little up, up upper side of the body then comes upper leg and pelvis so upper leg is between you know the knee and your hip area uh, so you can uh, tighten this uh, muscle group by tightly squeezing both your thighs together squeeze it tense it and then you can relax it so this can be done very easily so after upper legs and pelvis area comes your stomach and chest area so i can you can either do stomach and chest separately or you can do both uh, stomach and chest together you can tense them as a muscle group so this can be done by you know by sucking your stomach in and squeezing it you can feel the tension both chest and stomach by sucking it in and squeezing it so it can be done so tensing of this area can be done like that then comes our back back area so back area can be tense you know um, uh, you know simply by bringing your shoulders together behind you so like this you can bring your shoulders together back side and tense it your arm and shoulders you know you can just make fist like this and tense it so this whole area from shoulder and arm can be tensed and relaxed then come neck and face so neck and face can be together can be tensed and relaxed you know by simply you know distorting the muscles around your eyes and mouth so you can just do it like this and tense the whole muscle groups in your face and neck and then you can relax it so this is the way we can identify different muscle groups shorter uh, ways of doing it you can just do legs together shoulder chest neck back together face together so that can be done but it is better in the beginning you know use doing you know you do identify more number of muscle groups and target one by one to get more you know or the effective outcome of the exercise so this is the way you can identify target one muscle group then progressively you move higher you know upper part of the body one by one one by one tense them relax them tense them relax them so you can move from feet to head like that so your whole body will be fully relaxed and you can experience relaxation at a very deeper level at the body level also at the physiological level also so basically you know uh, the whole idea of this exercise is i can show it like this so start with deep breath then comes let's say muscle group 1 so we can start with let's say feet so this is muscle group 1 so tensing muscle group while uh, primarily uh, ideally uh, this tensing should be done while inhaling you tense and while exhaling you relax one while exhaling some people don't do it exactly with inhaling exhaling but it is better to do it while inhaling you tense while exhaling you relax
then rest for few seconds. So, this is how you do it let us say for muscle group 1. After that you just repeat the same process for muscle group 2, group 3 etcetera may be whatever. No? So, you can repeat the same cycle again and again for different muscle groups. So, this is how it is done. So, let me give you some uh, one detailed instruction, so that you can follow uh, just for your you know benefit, uh, how you can do it. So, as we have said we should uh, you can start with do it uh, while sitting or lying down in a comfortable position. You can just sit or lie down in a comfortable position in a comfortable and quiet place where there is no destruction. So, you can start uh, by taking few deep breaths while inhaling or feel how the air is filled in your lungs, hold it for some times and then exhale. So, take few such deep breaths. to relax. Now, you can uh, move your attention to the feet and toes of your leg. While inhaling start tensing your feet by curling your toes as much as possible. Tense it, tense it for at least 5 seconds, hold the breath, tense it, tense it for at least 5 seconds, feel the tension, how it feels like. then release the tension and now notice the feelings of relaxation in your feet. Rest for a few seconds and feel the relaxation on your feet. Next, focus on your lower leg while inhaling tense your muscles of your calves as much as possible, tense them, tense them, feel the tension and then release the tension while exhaling. Feel the relaxation in your lower leg and rest for few seconds. Next you can focus on your upper leg and a pelvis area. You can tense this area while inhaling by tightly squeezing your thighs together, tense them, tense them, feel the tension, hold it for a few seconds and then release the tension while exhaling. Feel the relaxation in upper leg and pelvis area. take rest for few seconds.
Now focus on your stomach and chest area. While inhaling, tense this area. You can do it by sucking your stomach in and squeezing it. Hold the tension, feel the tension for 5 seconds and then release the tension and feel the relaxation. Take rest for a few seconds. Then you can focus on your back area, tense the back area by bringing your shoulders together behind you. Tense them as much as possible, tense them for a few seconds and release the tension. Now feel the relaxation and take rest for few seconds. Now focus on your arm and shoulders. You can just tense them by making fist, tense them tense them for a few seconds and then release the tension while exhaling and feel the relaxation in your arm and shoulders. Take rest for a few seconds. Now we can move up to our neck and face. You can tense this area by distorting muscles around your eyes and mouth. So, you can tense them like this, tense them for a few seconds as much as possible, feel the tension and then release while exhaling and feel the relaxation in your face and neck. So, after doing like this progressively one muscle after another muscle. At last, you can tense your whole body together in whatever possible way you can kind of tightly squeeze your whole body, face, leg together, tense it, tense it, feel the tension while inhaling and then release all tensions while exhaling and feel how your body feels now each and every muscle fibers will be relaxed and you may feel a deeper relaxation throughout your body and ultimately it will also get translated into your mental relaxation also. So, this is how you can uh, do progressive muscle relaxation. So, the idea is you progressively one by one identify different muscle groups tense each of them and relax, then go to the second muscle group, tense them, relax them. Like this, you move from feet to head or head to feet, whatever is suitable for you. And in this way, you relax the muscle groups of whole body and ultimately you relax your mind also. So, there will be you know, very deeper level of you know, uh, relaxation using this exercise you can experience that. So, uh, this is uh, another way of relaxation. Uh, so, there are uh, many uh, such exercises, but uh, these are uh, most you know popular and uh, very easy to do exercises that I have discussed. These are one of the some of the one of the common ways of or effective ways of coping with stress is learning to uh, learning to relax yourself using some relaxation exercises. So, you can do deep breathing as well as progressive muscle relaxation. Both are very effective, at least research also indicates that. So, uh, we will be talking about different coping strategies one by one. So, till now mostly we uh, in the section of constructive coping, uh, we have looked into more like physical ways of coping or mind body strategies. So, you know at the physical level, what can we do to cope with the stress? Next, we will talk about at the mental level, how can we uh, you know, cope with the stressors by uh, manipulating our thought processes. So, that we will discuss in the next class. So, uh, 
So with this I will end today's lecture, thank you.